Artex Studio 16 has just been released, so myself and the team here at ThingLab thought it would be a great idea to put together a few short videos to show you the key features we're most excited to see. So, using the impressive Leo, we are able to scan some pipework here, even through the restricted access of this metal grate. This is going to give us some perfect scan data we can use to showcase some of these new tools. Now, 3D scanners export point cloud or mesh data. This can sometimes be a challenge to use when dropping it into CAD, but the ability to take that over with CAD primitives which have been defined from the surface can make it very, very powerful. Um, Artex Studio has allowed us to do this for some time actually, we can define a number of primitives, but this has been expanded out uh, and a number of different um, shapes are available, but we're going to define on this particular case, perfect for a tap is the torus around the top. Uh, fit this to it. Now in itself, that's very, very cool, right? But the ability to define and create a relationship between these two is what really is powerful. So what we can do here is we can select our center point of our cylinder and create that to be coaxial with our uh, torus. And then we can say, refit the meshes. So both of these two uh, are now constrained with each other and both have exactly the same vector point down the center. This can be incredibly powerful when we're taking it over to CAD for reverse engineering. Now, the other big thing within the CAD primitive tool is this, which is the ability to define a freeform. Now, this is really, really new, really, really exciting. We can define a surface by simply selecting it and we set select fit patch. Now, while that's doing that, we can flip over to the other side and we can do exactly the same again. Define it here. Fit the, fit the patch. Now, if I take off the mesh data that we've just created here or using, we now have the relationship defined between our torus and our cylinder, importantly with the same vector point down the middle, but we also have a surface model of the front and the back of the tap. Now, these are the building blocks that we need, obviously using this as a guide to create a CAD model. Now, uh, the relationship, like I said, is what I find really, really useful. So again, using it down here on somewhere like this flange, I can define a portion of the surface fit a plane and I can also now do exactly the same thing again where I fit a cylinder on this same flange being sure to select the right primitive now again the thing that's very very cool is the ability to create the relationship between the two so I can select my center point and I can say I want that to be parallel to the plane that we've just created select that and then refit it. So now, again, if I take off the mesh data, we have a flange on the top and we have the cylinder that has the relationship correctly aligned to this. Finally, we can go back over uh, and we can use this plane that we've created to define a DXF file, which will give us the outline of these bolts. Select our plane, move that away ever so slightly and say calculate. And now we have all the building blocks that we need. We have our STL as a guide, but we have our torus, we have our cylinder, and we have our surface model here, importantly, with the same vector point. We have our cylinder for the flange, and we have a plane to define that. But we also have the outline possible here. We can drop in as a DXF that gives us the outline of the bolts. To me, this is a fantastic data set that will really, really be powerful for reverse engineering. If you've got any other questions or want to have a chat about this or, or discuss workflows, please let us know and we'll be happy to help.